Okay, so I did start recording this video yesterday, uh, quite late on in the evening, but I just got so sleepy I couldn't finish it. I'll explain why in a moment. Uh, so I'll rewind back to last night, show you what I did last night, and then I'll conclude this uh, at the end. So do give the video a like and watch it to the end. Thanks. Hi there, Save with Crypto here. Right, so sorry this video is out so late today. Uh, the thing is, if you are a subscriber of the channel, you'll probably know that uh, I, I bought a door uh, with Ethereum um, for, for, for my car uh, because uh, I kind of pranged the driver's door uh, quite badly in a supermarket car park. Anyway, I had to go to uh, to pool in Dorset to get this get this door and uh, I did that this morning and it's, it's about you know it's about two hours away from where I live and, <laughs> and when I got there I realized the door wouldn't actually fit in the car so I had to kind of uh, you know use like a tow rope and uh, sort of wedge my jacket in there to sort of try and stop it marking the car and and anyway, I, I managed to get it home and actually dropped it at the place uh, that's going to uh, put it on the car next next week or maybe the week after. Uh, but yeah, so the car's going to get fixed. I was really pleased that it's actually the right colour because I saw it on eBay and I thought, I think it's the same. But you can never tell, can you, with like people taking photos of things with various phones, you know, that kind of thing. Anyway, so... Uh, that's what I've been doing today, but the problem was I had to drive home, you know, with the, with the tailgate open, uh, and I decided I wasn't going to go faster than fifty miles an hour, so I did that for about one hundred and thirty kilometres, I think it was. Uh, yeah, and it was a bit cold this morning, so it was like a bit drafty and windy, but uh, anyway, I've done it now, so that's good. So as I was driving along, I had my phone Bluetooth to the car, so I could you know, like listen to a few YouTube things and stuff. And I was I was aware that the price was going up and up and up. So yeah, so within within like like an hour or so of me driving, uh this candle had gone up to about seventy three thousand seven hundred and thirty eight. This is incredible, isn't it? I mean, it was only just every year ago when we were at about fifteen K and like seventy three now. What an asset. It's amazing, isn't it? Anyway, what I completely forgot about was the Ethereum Denken upgrade that was happening round about sort of like midday, just after midday. I can't remember exactly what time it was, but it was it was around lunchtime UTC. And Ethereum had a bit of a wobble and the price dumped a little bit and that affected everything else. And Bitcoin came down quite a bit. I was a bit annoyed because I was thinking, oh no, I should have taken a little bit of profit there, but I didn't. And then the price came down to like 71,600. And after that, I went off to pick my daughter up from school. Then we went to the gym for an hour. And uh, by the time I got back, it was it was kind of going up again. And yeah, it's been a volatile day, hasn't it? And here we are at 73,000. Anyway, it's probably at this point I should probably look at this message that was sent to me from Bank Erupt. Uh, it's saying, Hi, hey, Save with Crypto. Been following you for a while now, and it's amazing how you grew your account. I must admit, I'm pretty stunned myself, actually. I've actually gone from uh, having $2,300 in my BitGet account last September and Today I've got over two hundred and thirty thousand dollars, so I've actually hundred x the whole account, which is amazing. You know, I mean, many thanks to Bitcoin, obviously, but um, for for you know, like tripling in that price in that time frame. But um, yeah, it, it it has been good. I'm, I've surprised myself to be honest. Um, I, anyway, uh, been following you for a while, and yeah, uh, was looking to get some tips on how you went about doing that i.e you follow any strategies or what else keen to hear from you okay i said i'll answer this with a video probably tomorrow uh so that was would have been yesterday so i failed to do that um yeah okay um strategies look what i do right i do all my charting on trading view 
Okay, if you want to use that, you can use the free version. Just go to savercrypto.org slash TV. Uh, I personally recommend upgrading to just the first pl paid plan because um, you can have more indicators. I think with the free one, you can only have two. Uh, and you get the indicators by going up here and then sort of, you know, looking for whatever you want. For example, like MACD, it will show you moving average convergence divergence. So the indicators I predominantly use are indeed the MACD, the moving average convergence divergence, which is this thing here. Okay. And I also use this one here, which is called whole suite by in silico. Okay. And this gives us like green and red band that gives you an idea of where the price is going. And then I also use this other free indicator called the VWAP standard deviation bands version two mod. Okay. So all, with all three of these indicators, it looks a bit of a mess, but the idea generally is with the VWAP standard deviation, you buy in this region here, you sell there and that's it really. The whole suite gives you an idea of what's going on up and down, but I like to use that in smaller time frames, so maybe like five minutes. So for example, while I was driving along, the price of Bitcoin was going very, very high with this green ribbon here. Then it went red. And the idea here is to try and catch it at, at its bottom. So at this point here, the price dipped in to these VWAP bands here. So if you'd have seen the price coming down there, you would be looking down here at the VWAP and you'd be thinking, okay, the price is going to cut, the price is going to come somewhere down there. Then the idea would be to sort of try and catch that wick there and ride it back up. Now the MACD, so I say at the moment, there's no clear trend because it's going sort of green, red, green, red, red, whatever. Uh, if you look at that on a larger time frame, so say example, the one hour, like the MACD here has gone quite negative there. On time frames like the one hour time frame, what I'm looking for is a sort of confirmation of whatever the whole suite is showing uh, in the MACD. So say for example here, we can see here that the red whole suite thing is starting to thin out a little bit there, just slightly, but you'd be thinking, is that definitely going to change or is it just going to go thicker and go down? Now the clue there would have been the fact that the MACD had gone positive at that point there. So by observing these indicators, you wouldn't necessarily catch the bottom, but you would catch it around here, which then would go up. And really the only way to get a proper feel for this is to just do it. Just keep doing it over and over again. Use very small amounts of money and just get a feel for how the indicators work and how they give you information about the probability of where the price might go. And hopefully you can make some slightly more informed trades. And those three free indicators are the ones I use most of the time for getting an idea about where the price is going to go. So coming over to my BitGet account, you can see the kind of mechanics of this. So this is a trade I'm actually in from down at 68,376. Okay. And what I'm looking for is as we go up and down to basically add little bits into the trade when we see a real pullback. And similarly, when the price is at what I think is going to be like a local high, taking a little bit of profit. Now, there's probably some technical way of doing this, but like all I do is just go back to trading view. Now, it's a bit hard at the moment because it's midnight, but generally this level here, 73.985, is probably a reasonable place to take a little bit of profit. So 73.985, let's have a look at that. So I'd do something like I'd go 73985. I only want to take a little bit of this trade. And by default, it will show you the close quantity as being 100% of the position. But I don't want to do that. That's 11.286 Bitcoin because I'm trading with 1.1 Bitcoin with 10x leverage. 
So I just want to say that I would just take 1.286. So you see here that would actually be an 82% profit, which would be worth 0 0.00078 Bitcoin. Okay, I think that's a reasonable place to put an order. So if the price goes up there, that order will fill. If the price comes back down here, I've set a stop loss at break even, so the trade will close. I'll probably lose quite a bit in fees, but but I've taken profit with this one over the past day or so. And I've actually taken $23,491 profit anyway. So even if it came back down here, stop me out at break even, I wouldn't be upset. Okay, so that was last night and it's now Thursday morning. And uh, do bear in mind Thursday is sometimes quite a dumpy day, uh, statistically, although I think last Thursday was really good. Anyway, what happened overnight was uh, not a lot really. The price just kind of did this, really went up and down a little bit. And it hasn't got as far as my take profit here on BitGet. It got very near actually. So at this point, I'd be thinking, well, do I leave that at 73,985 or not? And what I'd kind of do is I'd think, OK, well, 73,895 came from this VWAP here, which resets at midnight, see, so it's kind of like doing that. Now, to me, that's kind of making higher highs all the time. Uh, it's making, mm, yeah, higher lows as well, which kind of implies the trend is still to the upside. So I think I'm just going to leave that take profit where it is. Now, there's probably some of you who want to get into an entry, uh, who are not in a in an entry already. Uh, first of all, I'm not going to short this market at the moment. I think the market is so bullish. Uh, I, don't, I think shorting is a really bad idea. So I'm looking for pullbacks and then going long. So what I'd be looking for is some sort of level of support. Now, to me... I'd probably say that round about this level here looks to me like that's been resistance. You know, it hit the price came up, pushed it back down, it went up again, pushed it back down, went up again, and then it broke through and it came back down. Okay, let's say it's more like that. Came back down. That was now support, so that went up again, and that wick yesterday came down, but that was support, so it's gone back up again. So I think if it comes down, we probably are looking at some sort of level about here. Now the point is, that is the bottom of that VWAP, isn't it? So I think a good long entry now, not with all your money, but like, you know, a small long entry that if it went much further south, there's a possibility of adding to it, which is not always the best strategy. But what we're looking for here is these kind of wicks coming down. So I think it's an okay strategy. So what I would say is something like 72,477. 72,477. Now, if you're not in a trade already, I would be using sort of, I don't know, 15 or 20% of your capital. I'm going to go a bit higher because I'm already in a long anyway. That's the kind of figure I'm going to go for. Okay, so that puts a long entry there. I've got to take profit there. So... If the price goes up here, I'll take profit. If it comes down here, it will add to my position. At that point, I will then look at my stop loss and make sure that if the price comes down further, I'm not going to lose money. So I would probably just sort of push the stop loss into profit a little bit like that. And to be honest, that's all I really do. So, you know, the ultimate thing is to be in a big long trade where you've got in at a good point. You've actually let the price go up quite a lot and then... When you get stuck in the ranges like this, this is the kind of thing I do. I sort of take partial profit at the top of the VWAP, and then I add a similar amount back in here. And then when you've got the chop like that, it's really nice because you can quickly get a lot of money together just by taking profit, adding to your long, taking profit, adding to your long, like that. Now, when you do this, your entry price will go up, okay? So you need to keep an eye on that. So you keep an eye on your price down there. And really, yeah, that's it. That's about all I do. And uh, it's been really good so far. Uh, I've actually got a few trades open at the moment. I've got the Bitcoin one there that is monstrously in profit, although that is a very big trade. That is uh, probably quite 
irresponsibly large actually but that is 72 percent in profit so i'm not worrying about that i've got an xrp one that's quite small that's just four percent in profit just ten dollars i've got an ethereum one here that's 684 dollars in profit 5.69 percent and i've got a dot trade that's small as well just 85 dollars in profit 17 percent in profit if you're quite new to all this i would suggest only having one trade at a time open because really to think about four things at once is is difficult now i appreciate this video has been a bit rambly and a bit random now in the future i will put together a kind of much more basic version of like how to use bitget and maybe i'll start off with spot trading and then work on to uh, leverage trading and then and then see where it goes because i'm aware that some things i do i've got so used to they just become natural whereas to other people it might seem like the most complicated interface in the world but i'm here to help anyway so any questions please do leave them in the comments down below while you're down there do make sure you are subscribed and you've got the notifications set on all and if you haven't liked the video already please do so and above all tell your friends